What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Castle Rock, Colorado, and today I wanted to go over an alternative solution to um, a laminar flow hood. So a lot of people ask me, um, like how much money do these flow hoods cost? And then that always leads to, you know, people getting discouraged about growing mushrooms. But personally, I believe that, you know, it can be done without a flow hood. And I'll show you what I would do if I didn't have a flow hood. Um, to me, that was, you know, the most important investment because of my laboratory um, background. But as far as, you know, a small scale or hobbyist farmer, um, you can definitely get away without a, a laminar flow hood. So I have um, what is called a still air box or SAB here next to me. So this is just a tote that has, you know, two six inch holes drilled out for your hands. And the idea is that it will prevent any airflow around your workspace. So it doesn't create, you know, a sterile work environment or aseptic like a laminar flow hood, but it does prevent um, dust particles from the environment from dropping onto your workspace. So the benefits of that is that um, it mitigates external factors for contamination, but um, the biggest contamination risk when using a still air box would be the technician. So one way to prevent this is to use isopropyl alcohol. So I'll just spray my hands off and um, you want to spray off the inside of the still air box and let that alcohol evaporate. As it evaporates, it's degrading the lipids and any bacteria and it will kill um, any living organisms on that surface. So right now it's disinfecting this cube of airspace. So one thing to keep in mind when you're using a still air box is the displacement of the air in the box when you enter. So um, air is, is a, almost like a fluid in the sense that when you put your arms into the flow hood, you're displacing air. So the same thing happens when you pull your arms out the air from the outside of your skin is being sucked into the still air box. So um, when you're working inside the still air box, you want to mitigate your movements back and forth and you want to maintain really slow movements so that the air inside doesn't become turbulent and lead to contamination. So another way to prevent contamination without a flow hood is to use injection ports, um, especially on liquid cultures. And this is a no pour agar culture. So you can um, put the melted agar into a jar with a, a port um, and then cook it so you don't need a laminar flow hood to pour it in a sterile environment. That way you can still quality control your liquid cultures and this is another useful tool because you can take sterile um, media so if you sterilize your liquid culture but you didn't have any cultures and all you had was the no pour plate you can pull that media inject it into the jar stir it around and then you'd have an inoculant for your liquid culture so moving ahead from there um, you could take your liquid culture and inoculate it into some sterilized grain. So you don't necessarily need a flow hood for that as well, but um, this lid doesn't have an injection port. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate how I would inoculate a liquid culture into this grain using the still air box. So first, you're just gonna disinfect the outside of the jar and I believe that the most um, clean area is directly in the center and it's the easiest to work with while you're working through these holes. So sometimes you'll see um, systems that are similar to these, uh, the glove box or they make glove bags 
And one of the issues with those is when you attach a glove system to this unit, it's going to create a vacuum effect. So if there's not a, like a perfect seal on the bottom, every time you're moving, you're pulling debris from the outer edge of that box, which, you know, in my experience, it's caused some issues. So I prefer to use just the open circle. Um, but so I'll go ahead and just sterilize the top of that liquid culture. And then I've just got a sterile sy syringe here. So I'll spray this off and um, a 16 gauge needle to draw my liquid culture. And then I'm just gonna open up my syringe and I can move this so you guys could see what I'm doing here. All right, so I'm just opening my syringe up like normal. And you can see my liquid culture right here. So this is kind of the delicate procedure. Um, you're just gonna wanna draw very carefully And if I had an injection port on this grain, I wouldn't be concerned at all, but I'm going to carefully take off this lid, making sure to not do any sudden movements that would disturb the air. And then I'm just going to set it down and very carefully make my injection and then I'm going to draw up another culture so I could save this needle and use it for next time. Alright guys, so I hope you enjoyed that video on a still air box as an alternative to a laminar flow hood. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed that video. Um, Someone else emailed me about making a DIY laminar flow hood, and there's a few options out there. I've never made my own, but um, I might do a video in the future just on different ways that you can make your own. I feel like it's worth the investment though, just to get a professional, and um, usually they have a lot better results. So. Um, Give us a thumbs up if you like that video. Uh, subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these. Check out our Etsy page, Fresh Fungi, for um, liquid cultures like these. We also got a bunch of plates and slants and um, our mushroom mug, Mush Love Mug. And um, stay tuned for our Fungi Fridays. Fridays at um, 4 p.m. Mountain Time, we'll do a live stream of whatever I feel like that day. So um, stay tuned. And until next time, much love.